Hi, my friend, Miss Natalie here, and today's story is called Mad About Plaid. Madison Pratt found their purse in the park. It was little and lonely and plaid. Poor thing, she said, and popped the little purse open. The lonely purse was empty. It was lined with a sad shade of blue. Don't worry, said Madison. I'll take care of you. Madison twirled the little plaid purse in time to the beat of her feet. Piddly diddly doo. She sang a silly song as she skipped along. In the middle of the skip, she stopped. She felt dizzy and frizzled and dazzled. Her fingers tingled, her thumbs were hot, her arms started twitching and itching a lot. Then the plaid from the purse crept slowly up her sleeve. It crawled all over her jacket. It slithered under her hat. The plaid did a dance of her underpants. Yuck! She cried fat plaid tears all the way home. Go away, purse! Madison scrubbed in the tub until her skin was sore from rubbing. But the plaid didn't fade. In fact, it started to glow. Her mom flew into a panic, even though she was a nurse. She looked in a book called How to Cure a Plaid Curse. Be still, be quiet, eat a special low plaid diet. No kissing or hugging, no using the phone. Don't bleach, don't burp, don't moan or groan. Don't laugh or cry, don't lose your head. It lasts a week, the little book said. Madison sat very still. She drank plaid-free cola with careful sips, but a little plaid burp escaped her lips and bounced around the room. Oops! Uh-oh. It floated around from place to place. Truly, it was madness. Everything the plaid germ touched caught a terrible case of plaidness. The grocery store and galleries the oak trees and the squirrels, the clouds that rain, the clanking trains, the ladies and their pearls, the classrooms and the bathrooms, the buildings tall and small, the cars and trucks and taxi cabs, the plaidness touched them all. Madison saw it on TV. Ay, 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 it's getting worse. I'd better go and get that purse, she said and raced towards the park. She found the purse alone in the dark. You're not to blame for this, she said, and gave it a little plaid kiss. Together, we must reverse this plaidning curse. Madison popped the purse open, remembering the sad shade of blue. We've had enough plaid, without a doubt, so she turned the little purse inside out. Her fingers tingled, her thumbs were hot, her arms started twitching and itching a lot. Then the blue from the purse crept slowly up her sleeve. The grocery stores and galleries, the oak trees and the squirrels, the clouds that rain, the clacking trains, the ladies and their pearls, the classrooms and the bathrooms, the buildings old and new, the cars and trucks and taxi cabs all turned a sad shade of blue. But Madison laughed, never fear, I know how to cure the blues. Then she sang an extra silly sound round, a piddly diddly doos, piddly diddly doo. The silliness spread from place to place, everything once sad and grim, now came alive with a wonderful grin. And as you probably clear already knew, with a silly grin on, you cannot stay blue. Madison said to her purse, between you and me, it could have been worse. I miss that plaid a little bit. I'd like to keep some of it if I may, to have around it on any day. I'm in a plaidish mood. All right, my friends, I hope you enjoyed the story. See you next time, bye.